preview presents Emmy winner, Oscar nominated American film and TV editor Mary Jo Markey. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Execute. First, I would like to ask you, okay, is it like a list? Star Wars, Star Trek, Super 8, Mission Impossible, a lot of, okay, mostly specific genre of fantastic. It was a choice or coincidence or? I have to say, honestly, it was kind of a coincidence. It had to do with um, meeting J.J. Abrams on the TV series Felicity. Yeah. And I happened to edit the first hour of TV that he ever directed and we worked together a lot during that series and then I ended up moving on to Alias with him which was the first time that I cut action yeah. and fights and big set pieces yeah. um, and uh, there was a, a ABC which was the network had asked him because it was a complicated show to uh, uh, put together a kind of a recap episode in the middle of the of the uh, first season yeah. and he just gave me kind of this bare outline of this she had been taken into custody by the FBI and they were doing this uh, inter interrogation of her and then we used all these flashbacks and I kind of picked all the flashbacks and put the whole thing together and that was my first Emmy nomination I got yeah. for that for that show so that kind of brought us together because he, I remember him saying, I, I never thought it was going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and is it crisis of cinema? I feel like it is a little bit of a crisis of cinema. There are not very many original ideas being um, presented right now. Um, that middle level uh, budget of film that used to be where, for me, the most interesting films were made it's gone right now. There's either a very, very low budget film or a really, you know, a high budget movie like a Marvel movie or a Star Wars movie. I was raised to do one thing. It's true. All of it. Which isn't to say that those aren't good and don't have an audience, but I think that there are a lot of people that wish for something else, like me. What is your favorite movie? Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's a difficult question. It's so for difficult. I don't know. I mean, I have so many. Um, I mean, I, there are some comedies that I really love, and I'm going to be going way back. I, I still love Tootsie. I love Annie Hall. I really love a movie that's not that old. Some new movies? Uh, Spy, which is only about five yeah. years. I think my, probably my favorite film last year was Cold War. I thought, Cold War, yes, I, yes, yeah. I thought it was a fantastic film. Um, it, it's a wonderful film. I can't. Th oh, oh, it's called First Reformed. Paul Schrader, First Reformed. It's about a, a minister in crisis. It's an amazing film. He won. I believe that Schrader won the screenplay award, the Academy Award for screenplay. Yeah. I was shocked that that movie got any attention at, from the Hollywood, you know, the yeah. Hollywood community because it is not very Hollywoody, but it's a brilliant, I think it's a brilliant film. I would like to ask you three most important things in TV or film editing. I would say shaping a character so that the character feels for me, real. I, I, I feel like the character, even, even if it's a comedic character, even if it's a character that is in a uh, some completely unreal situation, like I, I mean if you know my work, you know that you, you've seen characters that I'm working on running around on alien planets having gun battles with blasters. It's a completely unreal situation, but I still feel that their behavior has to feel emotionally and psychologically true. If it doesn't, I don't believe that the audience will connect with them. So there's that, there's um, pacing, that it the whole movie can't be, for me, paced the same way. It has to have rhythms. It has to m go up and down. Um, I just, I, I find the movies that are paced, uh, like, you know, gangbusters from start to finish, I think they're exhausting yeah. and not fun. And they don't give you a time to take in your experience. That, for me, they're not emotional. Yeah. And then I would say th that the third thing is making sure that the audience 
can follow what you want them to follow. I try to create a point of view so that the movie is told from a, through a character's eyes. You can't always do that because you're not always, sometimes that director's not interested in that, but I think that's the best way to lead a character through. And if, if the point that's being made isn't clear, then you have to come up with some new dialogue and, and some way to work in new dialogue so that it is clear. So the loss mm -hmm. and some difficulties are something which you liked in, in the process. Well, the, the pilot was one of the best experiences of my, of my professional life. It was. Uh, we also, again, had a very short schedule. He had decided to do a two-hour pilot, which we didn't really have to do, but he wanted to do a two-hour pilot. And um, everybody else was in Hawaii. I was at the Disney Studios in Burbank. And as soon as the material came in, I think the first day we got material in, it was one of these uh, scenes on the plane when it's starting to have turbulence. and. I could just tell from the first day that it was going to be great. Everybody was so good. Don't worry. It's going to be over. Um, but JJ used to call me between every setup. He would call me and say, like, what are you working on? And I would tell him, and I would tell him how I was doing it. And he would say, well, I thought you'd do it like this. And I, I would say, well, I think, I, I think we should do it like this. <laughs> and, you know? and he was just very open. It was, a, it was just, I remember com saying, you know, this scene's too long. We should split it here. And he was just so open to everything that I was doing because he knew that when I got back, yeah. we weren't going to have very much time. We only had one week when, when he got back before we had to turn it over to the network so and I would send him cuts and he would send me notes and I worked every single day <laughs> a 12-hour day Saturday Sunday oh every God. single day because it just had to be great I you know and yeah. I feel such loyalty to him and I mean everything that I work on I feel like it has to be great I can't leave any stone unturned you know <laughs> to be honest my career has exceeded my dreams I just you know, I don't have a Hollywood pedigree. I don't have any parents in the film business. I just moved out to Hollywood to be a working editor. And I kind of, you know, I'm, I, I feel like I've had that and more than that. So it's kind of already happened. <laughs> I know. <love it. laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, thank so, you much so much for the questions, Gabrielle. Thank you for all these movies. Oh, you're very kind. You're very sweet. <laughs>